For this year's Silk Road Mountain Race, I decided to go with a Bomb Track Hook XC, which you could describe as a monster gravel bike. Um, why not a mountain bike? Because I didn't have one. <laughs> if I would recommend to someone bike to, to go to this race, I would say take some flat bars, at least two inch tires and you should think about some suspension. Um, yeah, but I didn't have it, so I chose this and I'm pretty much maxed out on tire size. So in the front you can see two inch times 29 inch tires um, to have a bit more volume to be able to, to ride a uh, low pressure. Both of them are tubeless. In the back I couldn't fit the same 2 inch 29 inch tire so I went for a 700c 50c tire so it's the same width um, but it has a bit less volume. For the first time in my whole career I went with uh, electronic shifting. Um, it's a um, combination of SRAM Force AXS and the GX Eagle Mountain Bike derailleur. This worked incredibly well. Like it didn't fail a single time. If there's a lot of mud going on here and it's getting a bit out of shape, you can just readjust it and while riding it just works again. I changed the battery once. Perfect. Um, I was running 42 in the front. Uh, I would probably change that next time to be 36, something like this. To have just a bit more granny gear and I had 1050 in the back. Um, the disc brake rotors are both 160mm. Um, if, you, if you feel uncomfortable with such a small ring you could go for 180mm in the front. The bags are mostly Ortley. Uh, there's, those are a German brand. I like them for a certain fact. <laughs> All of their stuff is waterproof. <laughs> so <laughs> if, if you fail badly in the river crossing, all your stuff will still be dry, it's okay. And this zipper is the only zipper on the frame back that I haven't managed to break so far. And I've broken a lot of frame backs. So yeah. It's reliable, it just worked, and I can't say anything against it. I was carrying my spares in here, and two water bottles, plus a bladder for my backpack. Um, this is a dynamo driven um, backlight, and then I had a battery driven backlight here. You can see that those wheels from K-Lite, they are carbon, also a first for me, I've never ridden carbon rims off-road. Uh, but they are a bit special, they have three, three layers of carbon and one layer of negra, which is a plastic composite, and so they can't fatally break. They would basically flex, even if, if the carbon structure is broken, instead of just collapsing, so you, <laughs> you're lying on the ground. Um, I have a dynamo here, and this powers a K-Lite Ultra Bikepacker Dynamo Light. I was very happy about this. And then in here, we have some food, but mainly also the USB charger. So I got two USB outlets, and this is also connected to the dynamo. The cable goes out here and then down the fork. Um, that was very convenient, nothing against it. I had very minimal tri bars because you're not using them a lot, but the tri bars are very helpful because you can just rest your hands and get off the handlebars a bit. Actually one of the highlights for me this time were the fork packs from Ortley you can just take them off like this and they 
slide back on super easy. And so we should probably look at my cooking setup because it's the last item that is really <laughs> interesting I guess. So that was my cooking setup. The gas canister is already gone. I gave it to a local uh, photographer, Daniel. <laughs> he likes to have that stuff. <laughs> and um, this is my water container. And in here, I have some pieces of paper and cloth to, to clean and a spark, titanium spark for eating. Just spend it like this, get ready to eat. And everything else I need is this tiny thing here, which is packaging is slowly disintegrating. But this is the light, most lightweight stove that I could find. It's 26 grams. So it's just, it's actually very cheap, you can order it on Amazon and it's probably, I don't know, 30 euros, something like this, and that's it. For me that was a good setup because I was basically just boiling water all the time and that worked perfectly. Oh, one cool feature is I had all my tools stored in the handlebars. So, here in the handlebars, I had on this side, for example, a chain breaker and a tubeless plugging tool, and on the other side, I had a multi tool. That was super cool because you just pull it out whenever you need it and you're ready to fix your bike, whatever is not working. <laughs> what is in your frame bag? The frame bag. Frame bag is everything I might need to quickly access. So, in this case, toothbrush, chamois butter. Um, extra pair of socks in case you're really wet and cold you can have that and then my rain protective gear so this is a 7 mesh uh, Gore-Tex Pro jacket and rain pants yeah there's also those emergency gaiters for for the shoes against the rain I didn't really use them but okay and I had my gloves in here but I already stowed them away <laughs> this is basically <laughs> um, this used to be half food half my puffy jacket so at the end of the race it was basically empty so I was wondering like Maybe I could have done that smarter and not take a handlebar back at all. Okay, so basically the sleeping system is all rolled up together. I just need to roll it out like this. Then I have this super small pole here, which holds the bivy out of my face. And in here, is everything. So inside the bivy I have the mattress, the insulated mattress and my sleeping bag. So in the morning when I want to take off again I just roll the whole thing together up and I don't need to pack up tent or pack up in different bags. I just stuff it all back in into the bag and I'm ready to go in two minutes approximately. Yeah, and that's it. That's the sleeping bag. Good until minus eight. Perfect, didn't have any problem. Yeah, the whole sleeping system is 
like 1.7 kilos.